your opinions on uh, in the recent year or two, all of the different, you know, there's been air force pilots and based in San Diego that have come out and they've had their videos of these UFOs coming out of the water and within one second being meters away. Do you guys pay any attention to that stuff? Well, I do. I mean, I cannot speak for others. Um, and um, my view on these reports, these eyewitness uh, reports of unidentified flying objects, uh, UFOs that are unusual. Uh, my, my view is that um, these uh, eyewitness testimonies come from people that are not scientists, that were not um, planning to find these unusual things. And uh, we will be better served if we were to deploy scientific instruments in those sites and monitor the environment. Um, you know, wh I have two concerns about uh, these reports of UFOs uh, over the past decades. One of them is that now we have cameras and recording devices that are far better than we had decades ago. And back then, you know, the images were fuzzy and it was difficult to be sure that what it means and so forth. But with present day instruments, it should be crisp, clear. Uh, they are much better than we used to have and they are still fuzzy and, and you know, on the margin of believability. Uh, the second uh, reservation that they have is there are far many more cameras uh, available to monitor environments right now uh, by orders of magnitude. You know, uh, people have cell phones, you have drones, you have cameras on uh, satellites, on airplanes, on the, in the streets of cities. And the, the, the number of uh, video cameras looking at what's going on is many orders of magnitude larger than it used to be a decade or two ago. Nevertheless, the reports on UFOs have not increased. Uh, so that concerns me that maybe, you know, all of these reports were sort of uh, artifacts of the instruments that were used or impressions of natural phenomena. Uh, but I think that it would be appropriate to deploy scientific instruments and, and check it out. Uh, it's really, I mean, science is about reproducibility of results. Um, so one-time events are not believable in science. You should be able to reproduce them by being in the same environment under similar circumstances. And I would trust instruments recording these events. You know, there is this uh, biblical story from the Old Testament about Abraham that they heard the voice of God and that voice told Abraham to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. And uh, imagine Abraham having a cell phone with a voice memo up. Uh, if he could have pressed the button, he would have recorded the voice of God. And then instead of an eyewitness testimony, we would have the recording and that would have convinced uh, all of humanity that God exists. Uh, and so my point is that by recording things on instruments, you get a much more objective evidence than uh, all these reports that are now being declassified from the Pentagon and so forth. We should not obsess with these old reports that were based on either eyewitnesses or instruments that are much more inferior to the instruments we have now. We should simply use our best instruments, go to these sites and see what we, whether we see anything unusual. Well, the Pentagon actually said that they were in possession of some sort of inter or extraterrestrial craft on, oh. in the New York Times article. Well, what I'm saying is that it's better, you know, Abraham said that he heard the voice of God, right? So right. the question is, do you believe Abraham or not? I'm saying if he had a cell phone, we could have looked at the evidence. He didn't have that. And then you have to decide whether you believe the biblical story or not. And the same is true here. People report things and I don't know whether to believe them. So the only way for me to believe them, scientifically speaking, is to deploy recording devices in the same sites and see if they find something. When you were talking about 3D printing and, and printing organisms or basically duplicating ourselves on other planets. Now, I've heard reports of of people who have worked at S1 and, and Area 51 have obtained crafts that are very small, saying that only really tiny beings that have no reproductive organs. Is it possible that other that other 
beings are printing these sort of cadavers or uh, basically like humanoids, but aliens that can travel long distances through different solar systems that don't have to stay alive. They don't have to eat. You know, everything is possible and there are lots of possibilities outlined in science fiction stories. And uh, the key as a scientist is to look for evidence and uh, that should guide you as to which possibilities are real and which are illusions or, or um, uh, ima uh, you know, uh, our imagination of what might be out there. Uh, it's sort of like a, a detective story. You, you can have a lot of possibilities, an infinite number of possibilities, and you just sort them out and figure out which one is realized by collecting clues and evidence. You know, and we could think that we, you know, we are wealthier than Elon Musk. We could have a lot of money. Um, and the, the only way to figure out what we actually have is to go to an ATM machine and check it out. And so the ATM machine represents an experiment where you actually check uh, what you have. And uh, that's what guides modern science, evidence and clues. Uh, many times uh, scientists prefer to have uh, ideas that do not stand up to the scrutiny of experiments. And that's, that's legitimate as long as the ideas can be tested in principle. Uh, the frustration I have is that some parts of the physics community right now uh, you know, there are hundreds of people working on ideas that will never be tested in their lifetime. And that to me could be a waste of their time because it's uh, imagining things that they may not exist. Real quick, I wanted to go back to the mission you just spoke about that's about to arrive in Mars in a couple of weeks now. Mm -hmm. what, what is the purpose of that mission? What, they're looking specifically for life? Right. So this is the Perseverance uh, mission. And yes, uh, one of the highlights of this mission is to search for signatures of life. And there were previous missions uh, going back uh, almost 50 years um, that um, had some tentative evidence that perhaps there is something in the Martian soil that is going through metabolism that is living because they took a, a, a sample of that soil and they noticed that uh, there is some gas coming out of it that may indicate life and and when they heat that soil to a high temperature suddenly that goes away and there was a suggestion that maybe it indicates that there is life in that soil um, and and so the perseverance mission is equipped with all kinds of instruments that could then um, search for life that may exist right now but also search for life that may have existed before uh, you know if there were rivers or, or um, ponds uh, in the location where Perseverance lands, then uh, there might be some uh, leftover uh, signatures of life that may have existed there. And we don't know exactly how it might look. It might be skeletons or something else, but mm -hmm. the idea is to search for it and it would be very exciting to see what they find. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like we're doing everything we can possibly do within our means to to do these types of studies and to try to find extraterrestrial life and to find out if we're the only ones here or not. Well, primit primitive life, I should say, because technological signatures, we are not doing enough. That's what I started from.